Namadol. Interesting. Districts on or next to coastal lake tiles provide culture. <laughs> All right. What would that be worth it for me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It'll be worth thirty-two culture per turn. That's suddenly a very interesting city state to know. Okay, another seven envoys needed. We've got to be careful. As you can see, I'm sending a caravel out to go and find Australia. That's one thing. Go find South America. That's another. But I really want to see if Auckland's on the map. If Auckland is on this map, ladies and gentlemen, then I have a new priority. Military engineering. Did we get any NITA? I found coal before NITA. No, there's no NITA in Japan. That sort of makes sense. All right. Can we take the capital? Can we take the capital? You better believe we can. Now this is quite the war crime. We're going to get a few grievances for doing that. I want to puppet it though. 11 production. That's not much. Installs a puppet government that controls the day-to-day -day management and administration of this city. All existing tall extensions will be raised. Well, this city has none of those, so that's good. The city can't build tall extensions or wonders. Okay. And is no longer considered in any way for bonuses in empires with few large cities and is not counted as such. So it would still count that I own five cities for the purposes of the CYP mod. I just, it's just a really cool mechanism. I pretty much lose all science, culture, and faith from a city as well as the great people points. And I take a hammering to production and gold and a little bit less food, but it's, it's otherwise autonomous. It's always gonna be fully loyal. There's no way that I can lose the city because it's so close to Tokyo and I am Tokugawa. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take the time to fix everything. And once it's fixed, I'll install a puppet government. That's my plan, you know? Whether or not it's a good plan or not is another question, but that is the plan at the moment. There's Iceland. There's Norway. Ooh, Varangian electronics factory. It's unique. It's special. It's extra productive when powered, but it gives four culture after researching electricity. All right. Well, it's not that good a building to be honest, but it is a factory and that's kind of what matters here. You know what? Seoul is draining amenities. That is one problem I can see with this. Although it won't count as my city, it will count as a city for the purposes of amenities. My first plus four campus is complete. It's a fun building. It's nice, but I must continue building forever, forever of a building more infrastructure. That's really weird. If I give Saul back, I have to pay Korea. But if I don't, I have to pay them less. They actually want me to keep their capital. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, please, please take it. You know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain or question. This city is going to flip in a few turns. I'm just gonna leave a couple of units there because if I liberate this city, I can get rid of a bunch of grievances. This city's gonna, I mean, this one is a continual problem for a lot of people and I'll keep an eye on it. Oh, and Gazaga moves on this map as well. Ha, I mean, that's really good for late game when you're building giant death robots for a massive discount. Oh, here comes a military emergency. This is when I realized that I regret regret my life choices. Yeah. Okay, I'm back at war with Korea and India and Coupe. Oh, Coupe, you say? All right, well, this gives me a chance to just be an absolute nuisance. First of all, I'm going to go through every single person I know and just ask for anybody to join any war. I want just pure anarchy in the world. We managed to get a few people to declare war on India. That was kind of about it, but no worries. My navy, I think, is going to head down to Coupe. Probably the best chance I've got to do some really good plundering. John Curtin. You're the grandest hawk of war. Go on, you'll want to join in with at least one of my wars, surely. Oh yeah, they want to go for Coupe. Yeah. <laughs> Australia and the Polynesian Islands having a weird relationship. Who would have thought? Auckland exists. Auckland does exist on this map. I know that because they've declared war on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's both good and bad. The good thing is that they exist and I love that. The bad thing is that seven envoys to stop them being at war with me is quite a tall order. I have to save up all my envoys for some time. I have steam power now. I can put railroad down, which is just amazing. Most importantly, my naval units now have plus two movement, which is really cool. Netherlands, two more cities. There's a lot of European civs with only two cities, but don't forget the CYP bonuses are going to be huge in Europe. Guilds means I can put craftsmen in, which is way better than veterancy. 
and as you can see the trade routes we are producing are frequent and wonderful and we've even now that we've kind of coming across korea's navy we've got the option to get myself an ironclad 70 strength it's awesome it's absolutely amazing now we've got reina and liang gonna pick up magnus all of my major cities are gonna have a governor actually magnus calm down to kyoto because there is actually genuinely no housing in this city so you would be quite useful there oh korea is just so cheeky it knows it's, it knows the unit's gonna die but it still took out my trade route anyway i mean i, I guess that is economically the most annoying thing that could happen to me ludwig one city 10 population not so good sweden four cities 31 population well that's much better tokyo now has a coal power plant oh yeah just wait until this city switches on and we get power in it the lights are on but is anyone home it's unlikely oh that's so annoying literally last turn literally last turn coupe got him ah oh. That was the admiral I wanted. Never mind. Is there another admiral that does a similar thing later? So Francis Drake is a plundering. Then we've got Ironclad. No. No, that was unfortunately the only two. Never mind. Never mind. It, it's okay. To be honest, it's only a single unit. We should be all right. But it, it's just, it was so close. Capture enemy defeated units. Gain gold when you kill people. 50% gold when plundering. I mean, this is my plundering unit and I do get another trade route. I'm going to get instantly creates a privateer. I mean, Francis Drake, not particularly helpful for me right now. But owning two privateers technically is something I should be doing. So I keep that in mind. Plus, I can always send a privateer over to India and start raiding. Oh, the flying Ursa is having some fun now. Yes, we are just annoying Coupe considerably here. Sorry, Coupe, shouldn't have left. I mean, I know they've got boats, but I'm stealing so much more gold than any damage they're doing to me. Electricity, that makes my factories switch on properly, and now they're providing culture. One thing I do want to do, Venetian Arsenal, something I've been kind of putting off for a little bit, but that would be an amazing pickup for me. I could really, really spam out some boats with press gangs, which I'm going to do. Yeah, sometimes you just have to know how to treat yourself, you know? And that would be an amazing little treat. Korea is getting annoying, N not because they're actually threatening me, but they just keep sending like one-off slingers to attack me. And I keep looking at it going, why? Why would you do that? Stop it. Poland and Russia. Now, I'm expecting one of the two of these to be doing quite well. Uh, Russia normally has quite a bit of space. Five cities, Poland too. Yeah, to be honest, neither of them are blowing me away. Poland will be my friend though. I, I quite like that. Stirrups, we're going through some of these techs. Actually, 32 versus 29 for Gandhi. We're, we're in the lead. We have the tech lead. Never did we think we'd ever hit this. Pillage, 351 gold. We're still taking large amounts from the Maori. Very sorry, friend. What are you going to do about it, eh? No, honestly, that is a serious question for you. You should probably figure out what you're going to do about it because it's uh, becoming a problem for you. Uh, time to install a puppet government. Let's see how this works, shall we? Bam. The puppet government has been installed. Minus 90% on a lot of modifiers. The production's gone down. The food's gone down. But I think... Yeah, there we go. We've got slightly higher modifiers now on my core cities. So as long as this is sort of technically a puppet government, it should be nice. Oh, and the city actually gets plus three immunities from entertainment. Interesting. So it should retain its own happiness. So actually, I can take over a few cities like this. Huh. I like all of these new mechanisms. Like, I'm not entirely sure they're game-breaking or any, any sort of massive win for me, but it is really fun. I have just realized, though, that that obviously has knocked one of my trade routes out. Because one of the brutes is from Saul, this one, giving me six science, and that's no longer going to be giving me anything. Nah. Time to vote. I know that we've got at least a couple of industrial city-states on the map, so we're going to go for that. And I'd love it if I generate less grievances, but... I mean, who knows who's going to be voted in there. Yep. Oh, somebody that we haven't met is generating more grievances. Interesting. So I actually did get a diplomacy point there. I'm on two. Flying Ursa is about to get killed. That's not great. There is a small part of me that really does kind of want to let this happen and then get nationalism and then mobilization and then just build a better one. But I think for now it's not worth it. What I will do though, is find a city like this one that's working a ton of naval units. Naval tiles, I should say. Nope, I don't have a shipyard there. Let's go Tokyo instead. And uh, let's just buy a seaport. It's the ultimate shipyard building. And now my flying asset has a wonderful extra plus 25 combat strength now. So we're up to about 76. It's about the strength of the battleship. 
So we're not talking crazy amounts, but enough. Enough to be an absolute pain in the Botox. Stop blowing stuff up now. I finally made it to India and we can start pillaging here. It's gonna be a lot of gold, a lot of faith. Not very super useful things, but we're using the faith to get great engineers and other useful people like that. Venetian Arsenal. One free boat every time I build one. It's very exciting. I was just taking a look into Mali and Portugal, the two gold producing nations. Now, Lisbon and Portugal sometimes builds a commercial hub. I couldn't see they had one, but Mali of course has commercial hubs everywhere. Now, because of this, I'm actually thinking whilst Grandmaster's Chapel would be a lot of fun. I'm gonna go intelligence agency. Yes, I know for me, for Ursa, going for spies. Very unusual choice. But I think there's some serious gold. Serious gold on this map to be stolen and if we can steal it, we certainly will. My thief in the meantime is gonna be used to get this merchant because this actually gives me two more envoys and with two envoys, I'm gonna be able to steal Auckland next turn. Oh yeah, that's fun. Well, in that case, I can finally get rid of Diplomatic League and pop back Charismatic Leader. Republican Legacy, it's fun, but it's not giving me what I need. Invention. Now that's a card. That's a card that I want. Look at all this pillaging. A thousand gold, you say? Ah, oh, well, Tokyo. You might as well get a university. Go on, then. Another city has actually fallen to me. I could install a puppet government in this one as well. Do I want to take the whole of Korea? Mmm. Yeah, go on, man. We'll get that puppet government installed as quickly as we can, but that's not what I'm excited about. Two more envoys. 15% production in Tokyo. But most importantly, most importantly indeed, shallow water tiles provide me one production and plus another one because I'm already in the industrial era. Watch the seas around Japan become flush, flush with production. Oh, yes, yes, this is what we wanted to see. Having one of those little internal battles as to whether or not putting Ruhr Valley down on this tile would give me more or less production than if I didn't. But I think the 20% bonus production on the city is well worth it. So I'll build a trader and then Ruhr Valley time from there. Hoshiko. Okay, let's find the most gold. Now, it's not Lisbon. Portugal does have a 4,200 gold city. Mali, 2,400. Okay. These cities are likely to be very heavily counter-spied. But honestly, I'm gonna give it a go. We're playing spies. We're going for as many big spies as we can. You will also notice that I have put down a couple of pins for spaceports. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna build spaceports there, but what I find when I play with very little land mass, which is exactly what's happening this game, I totally forget to leave myself enough land for spaceports. So I've marked out flat land so I don't forget. <laughs> It sounds absolutely ridiculous, but yeah, that's that's what I've had to do. We've had to resort to making sure I don't forget in that way. Moksha is the last governor in my main cities. Perfect. And as fun as invention is, I'm going to now pop in my new card, Press Gangs. Let's get ourselves a few boats in various cities. I need a bit of a fleet. That I'm, just, I'm not losing around my land, but a bunch of my trade routes keep getting stolen by like the odd random Indian vessel. It's like, stop it. I'm raiding you, not the other way around. I guess I am still a monarchy. So at some point I should unlock Renaissance walls. And I would like to remind everybody that I am getting 16 faith per trader at the moment and a bunch of extra things. Yes, as I'm building more and more districts, this is becoming more and more useful. Ruhr Valley. Oh, it's a good valley, that one, isn't it? Oh, Coupe is actually invading me with a land force. Oh, that's so sweet. I love it. I mean, admittedly, for Coupe's sake, it's not great when your invasion force is described as sweet, but <laughs> that's what I feel it is. Every turn, I'm just plying the international trade market with all of my resources, all of my luxuries, everything is going in the pot. This is how I'm just building my economy up. Gold, 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 gold. Hey, I've got 49 AI players here. I might as well use them all. I'm gonna take peace with Korea. Honestly, I've raided everything. They keep stealing my trade routes. Coupe is not getting peace because, you know, I'm having fun. Machiavellianism. I know that reducing the time of my spy missions means that I steal less gold, but it means I get promotions quicker, and that's kind of what I need right now. Buying myself a little bit of cultural time by stealing a couple of tiles that Vietnam might be able to take from me, that I can work, just showing up my borders, but to be honest, most of the coast is pretty safe. It's more annoying, actually, that like all of these units just keep trying to attack me. You're all so weak. Stop it. Ugh, and, and like, I can't quite kill each unit. 
<laughs> they keep every unit will survive on like barely any health. It's very frustrating. Let's get ourselves a chancery. A little bit more production, a little bit more faith in my capital. Stop attacking my cities. Oh, there we go. There's an actual kill. Annoyingly, they've caught me with my pants down because my wall isn't yet up and they're gonna go and well, they may pillage my aqueduct. It depends. They may just be trying to get to sort. Oh, they're doing the emergency thing, aren't they? So they're just blindly going towards it. Uh, all right, that's fine. We don't mind that, really. With all of this pillaged faith, I can now afford Da Vinci. Mausoleum Da Vinci as well, the best sort. I think I've got one, two, three workshops at the moment, a fourth on the way soon. So there's a decent amount of culture there. And Canada. I really, really wanted to meet Canada. Because Canada, like Sweden, loves diplomatic favour. This will be the test. Out of everybody on the international market, will they appear at the top? No. It's still Poland. Poland are the ones buying diplomatic favour. Hey, you know what? That's chill. And with siege tactics, mercantilism, we now have a renaissance era golden age. And you can see a lot of people have just gone gold. Korea somehow is heroic. We've got normal age China and normal age Korea. Those are the ones immediately around me. Vietnam? Dark age. Interesting. City life, the modded golden age, only really tends to affect cities with 20 population or more. It would give me 15% faster growth. That is quite big. So let's have a look and see if that would be worth it. International trade routes, I don't have a single one. Extra movement speed for boats is useful, but I'm not going to be settling. Exodus of the Evangelists, I'm not spreading my religion. Monumentality, it would be fairly useful to buy builders with faith. So really, I'm deciding whether or not I want to go from 49% city growth in Tokyo to 65%. What would that be? It would only be worth about three food at the very most. It's really not worth a lot of food. No, I think I'd be better improving my tiles at the moment. So whilst we're not getting the extra 20% population boost, I will go monumentality again. For me, that seems to make most sense. Uh, you can see that they have indeed pillaged every single tile, like a bunch of absolute noobs. How dare they? Gah, so rude, so rude. Now that I'm also not getting science from my harbors, I've uh, lost almost a hundred science per turn. <laughs> Pretty brutal losing that, but never mind. I am stealing so much stuff from Coupe. I really am. I've, and I've got mercantilism now as well. Oh, more privateers. Let's get a few more privateers. This is actually a really good idea. I can build these super quickly, and these are just going to go and pillage all around me. Japan is going to be the most frustrating naval powerhouse, just going around stealing every tile I can. Ruh Valley, the one production for each mine and quarry in the city is kind of neither here nor there. It's mainly the 20% bonus production in this city now. That's a big number. We like to see it. And 19 population. Now, if my calculations are correct, yes, we can now build our first tall extension building. Now that we have hit 19 population, now this is something any city can do when it hits 19 population. You can see our smaller city is now nine pop, excluding our puppeted government. Korea is a puppet. We, we're ignoring that. And I've unlocked quite a few tall extensions so we've got a temple, a university, shipyard, seaport, factory, power plant. Now they all have increased abilities when there's a governor established in a city, which they do, and they have even more if the governor matches up with your particular tall extension. Now Pingala in my capital is a great place to look because I do have two options. Connoisseur works with a theatre square tall extension. I don't have that, but researcher works with a campus tall extension. If I build one, I get a bonus five science and two great scientist points. That is something I want in my life. So world wonders in this city, this is the university tall extension, provide one science, provides one extra great scientist point per 10 population in the city, so we should be getting two very soon. Another two science, another 0.25 science for each citizen in the city. Again, that's worth like three or four science and 10% production towards campus projects in the city. And there's actually an additional bonus if I were to get space initiative. Very interesting. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a tall extension building I want. It's 2,400, that is so expensive. Oh well, we will pick it up. I think these all increase city growth as well. Like every tall extension building you get increases your city growth a little bit. So that's quite fun. Chemistry boosted, lovely. That's the last troop that Coupe has sent over. They keep pillaging this flipping aqueduct. Please stop it. It's a wonderful aqueduct. I want to keep it alive. Gee, we're going to get a spy first and then I'll send it over to Mali. We'll see if we can get two over. There are the Aztecs. I realize I should have been exploring the other side of the map, but I did not. 
And here is Teddy. Oh, Teddy's got some sugar for me. Of course he has. I might have to reject it though. After all, I am sweet enough. Aztecs want to be my friend. It's about 50-50 to be fair. When I meet somebody new as to whether they want to be my friend or not. Siphon funds, 63. No, I'm going to first of all gain sources in Portugal. Hopefully Lisbon eventually will build a commercial hub. It's got a river. The AI is often tempted to do it. We'll see if it works. Oh, the gold I'm getting is just glorious. Colonialism. Well, I do have a colony, but it's on the same continent as me. So that's not going to be great. And Raj, not very helpful when I basically have only the one city-state. Because people keep stealing Chingati. Please. Please, no. I want it. I must have it. It's worth about 150 faith per turn. I, I must keep that city-state. Second spy off to Mali. So we have one in Portugal, one in Mali. We're just going to get as many offensive spies this game as we possibly can. And I do now have some frigates out. These are a lot of fun. These are going to go down to try and attack Coupe. Just really be a nuisance. Equally, should we go and... I mean, if Coupe is not putting walls up around their cities, there's a large part of me that wants to just go and kill the city and raise it to the floor, because I can. Natural history. This will unlock water parks. That means I'll pretty much be able to expand as much as I want and keep all of my core cities happy, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Treating every city to a bunch of builders. Liang is giving nice six charge builders, but these are all five charge and I've got tons of faith per turn. So this is all really cool. Just a quick cheeky theater square in my capital there. It's quite nice actually. Gonna buy myself an amphitheater. I wanna get the archeological museum. There we go. There's the archeological museum. And where's my little pirate ship? There you are. A little yoinky poo. A natural history is mine. Excellent. We'll get the water park down very soon. I'm just making my way along now. Enlightenment, civil engineering, urbanization. These are fun cards. These are added with the mod. Mega city innovations is 10% science in all cities or 20% if my empire contains at most five cities, which is good, but it only applies to cities of at least 22 population. So those cards aren't going to do anything for a little bit, but they will at some point soon. Hopefully, he says. Hopefully, with the most greatest hopening, the Mayans again. They don't want to be friends, but they're doing pretty well. Over 100 cents. Some of these American civs are doing incredibly well. Got a little bit more space to roam and lurk. Let's see if I can execute maximum cheekiness. Can I kill? Oh, I can't quite kill a city, but we're almost there. <laughs> I'm just going around mucking with the Maori. This is what happens when you declare an emergency against me. I get really mean. And I think that's totally fair. Look, <laughs> Indians, they're, they're just having their coast absolutely raided. I mean, Kope, what did you expect was going to happen here? You're just fueling me. Yes, fuel me. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can ever imagine. As you know, that was that was Kenobi, wasn't it? That was him being good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I meant this a lot more evilly, said Ursa Ryan with great evil intention. Not building any boats at the moment. Craftsman's just a nice little solid thing. Surfed them. Oh, I tell you what I'm going to do. Let's just buy a few more builders because there's no need to actually keep this card in anymore. Like faith wise, we have faithed ourselves everywhere. Phew, what a day for faithing. Just so much. Right, there we go. Get rid of it now. What else can we have? Natural philosophy and let's go rationalism. Watch this. 232 science goes all the way to 269. We are turbocharging, especially with the university tall extension, which is going in next turn. Oh, this is going to be good. I'm also starting to work fourth and fifth ring tiles around Tokyo, which is great. There was a fish on that tile that I have shredded. There's two more there. One, two. They're going to get sacrificed to the greater Tokyo population. It's going to spike this up. We need to go as high as possible. As high as possible. But look, we're at 20 pop. We finally did it. We did a population, everyone. Oh, the science of this city has gone up quite considerably. Look at this. Up to 150. I was on about 115 and now I'm at 153. I guess I have put a couple of cards in since last I checked, but these tall extension buildings are pretty potent. Hydroelectric Dam in Tokyo. Actually, I'm, I'm quite excited about that. That's really cool. It means I can stop burning so much coal on power, which is pretty much just burning in Tokyo, to be fair. No more. No more shall we burn. Instead, we will simply harvest the finest of snuffly trufflies. Yes. Yes. Snuffly trufflies. The only problem, I said the only problem, one of the main problems with Coupe is Coupe doesn't really tend to upgrade many of the tiles in their empire. So there's never really a lot to pillage. <laughs> 
which is a bit annoying. All of the enemies we could be fighting. It's a very frustrating one. You think walls are gonna save you, do you? Na na na. Knock knock. Who's there? It's Ursa. Running around. Pillaging things. It's so fun for me. Let me in. Let me in. I want to be your friend. More coupe cities. Hello there. I'm going to raid your things. Don't mind me. Nagoya, you can do something very useful. You can put down a water park right next to my capital's theatre square. Boosting that by another plus three. So I'll go from three to six. <laughs> it's nice. My goodness, why are you bringing a settler here? Of all the things you could be bringing. Stop it. Stop. I didn't show it on camera. This is what a fish looks like when it's not worked, right? Two food, one gold. I bought this tile and put a fishing boat down same turn and it went to four food, three production, three gold, one science, one culture, one faith. I mean, yields everybody, yields. Oh, they're fun. The world is round. Who, who knew it? My boats are just shouting to each other across the Aztec land. Hello. Oh, source is active. 4,000 gold potential stealing from Portugal. There's going to be counter spies here. This is not going to work, but we'll give it a go. Because why not? Why would you not give it a go, eh? Inca. Five cities. 120 signs. That's pretty good. I'm doing the same thing with Marley City. We are getting sources. Things like ketchup, barbecue, mayonnaise, maybe even hollandaise before we sign and funds. I mean, otherwise, what a ridiculous mission that would be. I'm stealing so much gold from Coupe that I actually am running out of ideas as to like what I should be doing with it. <laughs> I can't spend it fast enough. 21 pop in Tokyo. You know what that means? It's the second tall extension. Ooh. What do I do? What do I do? So space initiative will help. Yeah, that would that would give us more campus tall extension buffs. Curator, connoisseur. These are all for archaeologist buildings. So it's actually, we might as well just go for the science and then we'll go for the culture. Let's just double up on it. Yeah, why not? So we're going to get a little bit of tourism and extra tourism, which is a bit rubbish, but we get a ton of culture. Two archaeologists rather than one. Extra yields? Yeah, you know what? Sod it. This is a really cool building. I'm doing it. Haha, -ha, we did break through. Yes, yes, raise, raise the city. <laughs> Actually, it'll end up helping Indonesia quite considerably there. Meanwhile, the Flying Ursa has done basically an entire tour of this empire now. Everything that could be pillaged is, has, and will be pillaged. Is that a complete sentence. I hope it is. India is being more annoying. They have a lot of bombards. Did you see me there? I, I just pressed a bunch of buttons on my keyboard by accident. I managed to accidentally press shift and enter at the same time. So I just force ended turn there. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, this ship may be about to die. Hey, look, sometimes when you film for hours and hours and hours on end, as such of such these long games, sometimes they do. You do some really silly things and you sort of look at yourself and you're like, why did you do that, Ursa? <laughs> Never mind. This is really fun. I'm I hope everybody at home, you watching this edited video, I hope you're really enjoying this series so far. These take so long to film, these huge TSL games. And my lord, there is a lot of waiting around. I'm just, I'm talking over this so you get a real sense of how long the turns take to render because oh my lord they do but I wouldn't be doing anything else it's so much fun I really enjoy it it's just something so satisfying about seeing the world evolve and I mean we're at economics now on turn 142 space initiative here we go more science per citizen extra scientist points for my university we are now up to 171 science look at that yes lovely you just hand delivered me a settler I don't want your settlers stop bringing me settlers i don't know what your problem is here it's it's actually it's ridiculous <laughs> basically just delivering me settlers like i don't want them please oh hello yeah people are starting to really lose cities to loyalty now i'm going to make a, an invasion fleet very soon especially if we can unlock battleships soon but i would love to get a liberation task force that basically has one sole job and that's to forgive my diplomatic crimes by liberating cities that don't need liberating gonna be both brilliant and totally pointless at the same time gran colombia nice to meet you you seem to be doing honestly pretty poorly i say that in the most possibly condescending way that an ursa can manage 
Hey! Military Emergency was successful! 200 diplomatic favour. The most exciting thing about that is, quite frankly, the disgustingly large amount of gold I'm going to get from selling all of my favour to the highest bidder. Ah, it's atrocious. I'll promise anybody anything. I think that's the important thing to learn here. I will. I'll do it. I'll just say, sure, you... I, I will vote for whatever you want. Just give me gold. No, 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 no. I absolutely am bribable. In fact, here is a catalogue of all of my prices. <laughs> How you can bribe me at any one given moment. Worried that I'm too expensive a bribe? No, don't be. <laughs> I'm probably not. Ah, uh, these are things I joke about, but it's far too accurate <laughs> with like the real world and what happens. Oh dear. Maybe I should do two for one bribery offerings, huh? Hey, you pay me gold for diplo favor and I'll vote for two things instead of one. Quick two for one. Look at that. What an offering. Starting to go mad waiting for these quick deals to load. Oh, here we go. Phew. There you go. That's what a diplomatic emergency pays out eventually. 99 gold per turn. Oh yeah. In the business, we call those big numbers. Very big numbers. Coupe is going to pay me 73 gold per turn for peace. I'll take that. That's great. I've literally pillaged everything they had. I am absolutely ecstatic with that offering. And I'm just going to have a look and see who else has denounced me. Can we get another cheap war out of anybody? Cree have denounced me? Interesting. They're kind of the only ones on the coast. But they do share quite a large coast with me. How much have they developed it? Uh, it doesn't look like a lot, to be fair. I see one plantation. That is it. Oh, that's frustrating. I'll be honest. I'm deleting the settler. I'm not going to use it, am I? <laughs> Let's be honest. Oh, hello. It's a, a successful spy mission. What? 3,900 gold from Portugal. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, now, I, I am absolutely a spy of great distinction. In fact, I'm going to just give you the surveillance just in case. Level two, we'll go and do another mission next term. But that's awesome. This mod has a button called Abandon City. It basically makes the city revolt immediately. And just because it's there, it's the most tempting thing to press every time I see it. And I don't trust myself. I really don't. I, I wish that button was not there because every time I look at it, every single time I look at it I go oh I really want to press can I press the forbidden button please please no sir no come on be brave as I pick up new governors now I'm looking for things that stack very nicely actually I think just finishing Pingala off yeah it gives the city a lot more culture per turn so that's what we're gonna do for now oh but I need to start thinking about which other governors I'm going to promote. Yeah, that's a good chunk of culture. We've got 131 coming from Tokyo now. Tokyo, no. That's a lot of culture. There's so many wonders that I could build. But I've just got so limited space here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I think I'm going to put down an entertainment complex in Tokyo, though. We just want all the districts down that we can get. It's a one-turn thing. Another spy? No other city comes even close to the two that I'm uh, stealing from at the moment. So I think I'm going to send you to Portugal as well. And we're just going to sort of double up on this city. They can't both decipher funds, but they can do fun projects sort of between the two of them, which are quite good. We've got universities being finished everywhere, though, now. With civil engineering, we are now going to go to urbanization and I need cities of at least 22 population. And we've got one now. We have a single city with 22 population. That's lovely. Nagoya almost at its next, uh, the first tall extension for that city as well. That's really cool. We could improve Liang, get aquaculture for fisheries, and then improve the trade routes to and from this city for every harbour building. That's tempting, actually. Spread the bonuses out. We'll do different bits and pieces. The Flying Ursa is just basically sailing around the sea at the moment. I, I don't really know what to do with it. Excavating artifacts on very low tile maps is often so important just because you can't do anything with that tile whilst the artifact is down. So now that's gone. That's that's really handy. All I put there though. Oh, there are two districts right next to it. So it would be stackable with something. It's on a hill. Pop another theatre square down. Do we? Ah, I don't really need the culture though. Encampment? Ah, it's still the encampment. The production actually does add up really quite nicely. 
Mapuche. Five cities, 28 population. They're doing okay. They're doing okay. Who is best? After me. Gandhi. Oh, and I've been definitely annoying them. Memman, Samusa, the Menelik, then Canada. So the usual contenders, the usual culprits. All still doing well. I like it. Oh, India's actually repairing a lot of the stuff though. Not everything, but a lot of it. I keep, they keep offering me peace and it is tempting, but I don't actually see the need for peace at the moment because I'm gaining so much just from reading them. Brazil. Oh, 47 population. They're doing a lot better. Keep stealing great merchants with all of my faith and it's very, very handy because I I just am stacking envoys over and over and over and over and over. If I find one that works really well, my Nan the Doll, unfortunately, is 17 to the good. No way I'm getting that, but hoping there might be one in South America. We haven't really found everything just yet that could be found in this direction. Maybe, maybe Cokia? Mexico City might have spawned, I don't know. Aha, Buenos Aires, this is a new opening for me. Ah, oh, another nine envoys, but this is a productive city-state. Between this and Cardiff, I, I've been kind of umming and ahhing as to which one to get. Cardiff is a little bit more protected. Do I need luxuries or do I need power? Power is actually more handy, seeing as I've got so many harbour buildings here, but both are good. So I'm kind of just keeping both in mind at the moment. One thing I will do is I'm just gonna have a look at the internet market and see if I can buy a ton of nitre because my capital needs to do something and frigate fleets could be quite fun. There are a bunch of cities appearing now that are falling to bad loyalty and they are screaming out for a liberation. You know the, the sound. It calls on the breeze. Echoes amongst the woods. Free me. I'm sure you all know what it sounds like. <laughs> Maybe. Well, has Ursa lost it? Quite possibly. Uh, I think we've got to that stage of the game where quick deals is pretty much useless now. Oh no, look at that! There you go! 70 Niter from Zulu. Alright, let's make some booties. Frigate Fleet. Three turns for two of them because of Venetian Arsenal. And I'll speed that up in a second, actually, because I can make another one after that. Or, you know, I'll spend 115 gold to just unlock it now. Because honestly, I've got the gold to do it. There you go. Raid not being very helpful anymore. Tokyo now does it in two turns. Ah, the true and total balance of late game policies all stacking together. It's wonderful. Here we go. The, I think this is sort of northern Hawaiian island that Indonesia settled, but has lost a loyalty to Maori. I'm not the one causing loyalty pressure here. I, oh, actually, I am. All right, fine, but I don't want it. I don't want it. So this is a good way of reducing my grievances because I can go in, liberate the city. It's still going to fall in 23 turns, probably. Oh, sorry, five turns. Actually, it won't be that bad because once you remove the 23.9 population pressure from Japan because I have liberated it, can, you know, the, the city won't be influenced by me anymore. Yeah, I think that should flip back. But okay, we're going to start liberating things now. 224 diplomatic favor. Oh yeah, and oh, Hawk of War loves me doing that. Of course you do. I've got some frigates. My first few frigates are gonna go out and start liberating with force and great violence. Here is flight. Yes, yes, aerodrome. I need a population of 25 in Tokyo before I can build one of those. That's unfortunately high, but I'm gonna start building some aerodromes now. Oh yes, that'll be good. And an ironclad, oh, two fleets. Just, I love, I love Venetian Arsenal. You've heard me say this before. It's such a good wonder. I have more envoys now, so I am gonna steal Cardiff. I mentioned this before, but I just think 15% production for buildings, wonders, districts is really good. And two power for every harbour building. I have a lot of harbour buildings, so that's fun. Byzantium, oh, one city, Theodora, come on now, you've got one of the best civs in the game. You should be doing more than that. At least you still hold Constantinople. That, that is okay. Starting to collect a few artifacts now. Not hugely important, but, oh, it counts as instantly being themed now because I've got at least three in here. I've got 18 culture but I love that. This CYP mod, there's a lot to love. There's a lot to enjoy in it. Lots of like little, little fun synergies and actions you can perform with each other. It, it's wonderful. 5,000 gold that time. Okay, and 2,700 gold. Oh, <laughs> I better spend it quickly before the AI notices I've got so much. Looks uh, a little bit suspicious, doesn't it? It's like, what? Uh, so where did you get all that gold from? And I'm like, hmm? Oh, I, I wouldn't worry about that at all. No, not at all. So I'm just looking at my capital and domestic trade routes to and from this city provide two gold. There is an inherent ability to do that with the shipyard even before you take aquaculture in. So putting these in my capital 
That makes a big difference. Hmm. I think I might treat myself to one of these. I think I might indeed. Every single trader in my entire empire goes either to or from Tokyo. So getting this shipyard tall extension, you can see already that's, that's helped my capital quite a lot. Oh, nine food. Yep. Okay. There are some good trader it's now. That's awesome. Just realized I could be getting 20% bonus science in my capital because it's got to 22 population now. Oh, that's worth 42. That's, that's a lot. All right, let's put that card instead of natural philosophy and hopefully, nope, doesn't go up. Oh, the way that the cards calculate sometimes just isn't quite accurate. Okay, we need to get this card switched back. Still though, it's quite fun. Oh, we can culture bomb. That would be relatively amusing if we could do that. And we already know there's industrial city states. If it was, yeah, it was industrial voted for last time. I'm saving up my favor. I don't want to be spending it all. Do I believe that if Japan, I were to try and say, I don't know, do something silly, like puppet China. Do I believe, <laughs> would I really do that? Hmm. Well, with the inevitable emergency that will appear from that, I just want to make sure that I have enough to vote it down. Saying that, I am going to just subtly work on the friendships of as many people as we can here because I feel, well, I feel like we can get more people to like me than currently do. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Tennis, Dr. Bobby, Polar Wallaber, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.